Today, I want to find out whether it's possible to get all 29 base game trophies in Minecraft without ever placing a single block. This means smelting iron without placing a furnace, crafting every tool without placing a crafting table, and building another portal without actually building another portal. The success of this challenge heavily relies on the trophy list, and with the PS4 version having two trophies that I deemed impossible, I was forced to head back to the good old days and play Minecraft on what many of us would consider the first real introduction to the sandbox universe. Also, this video is sponsored by War Thunder. Minecraft on PS3 is just a feeling you don't get anymore. The crafting menu, the inventory, which gives us a trophy, the old textures, the fact I'm using a PS3 controller, like all of this just transports me back to that moment in time when little old Satire was just 11 years old. But enough reminiscing, we have a platinum to obtain. Along with the taking inventory trophy, we also got the remainder of the introductory kind of trophies too, for getting wood and crafting a crafting table. I thought about just placing this crafting table and ending the video here, but I resisted the temptation and headed into the unknown, eventually stumbling across our first village, which is the perfect opportunity to introduce the first task of this challenge, finding a village that houses both a library and a weaponsmith. I was purely banking on the fact that I knew this is possible in the recent versions of Minecraft, and with no prior research, I went into this village with a big load of copium strapped to my chest. The veggie farm gave me almost a stack of carrots and uh, some beetroots which would definitely come in handy later and not be thrown into lava. But the real reason we were here is to see if the village contains one of or both of the items we needed to begin this challenge. I searched every house I could find until I ran into this villager and realized this would not be the village I was hoping for. So I reluctantly kept searching the map for another village before nighttime hit. This was my first proper night within Minecraft in almost a year of not playing, but that didn't stop this spider from trying to get the jump on me. I quickly defended myself with the resources I had at my disposal eventually taking him down with my eight potatoes. There was also a woodland mansion here too, but I would hopefully return to this a bit later on since I still needed to actually start this damn challenge. I searched far and wide, exploring as much of the map as I possibly could, just eating away at the limited carrot sauce I had in my hotbar. The more I searched this map, the more this feeling of doubt started to grow inside my head. Was it even possible for the PS3 Minecraft villages to contain the two key items this challenge relied on, or was I just wasting my time exploring these empty PS3 worlds? I continued to search through multiple biomes with this thought in the back of my mind, before the one thing I was looking for appeared seemingly out of nowhere. I was so excited that all the doubts in my mind subsided as I made my way down the hill to search this village. The first house, nothing. But the second house, the second house had exactly what we were looking for. This proved that not only was it possible for PS3 villagers to spawn crafting tables, but it also proved that this challenge was one step closer to actually being possible. Aww. Before continuing the search, I decided to take the time to gather some extra resources and craft a pickaxe, hoe and sword, earning me three separate trophies. Fueled with determination, I left the village in search of one more. One more village that would make this world the perfect one for this challenge. Spoiler alert, I didn't find that village. So, I created a second world and got to work looking for more villages, which led to the first weaponsmith being found, and I couldn't believe it. I searched the rest of the village and found absolutely nothing. But, finding this weaponsmith so early on was sure to be good luck in finding a library in another village. But, uh, that couldn't have been further from the truth. I found two more villages in this world and yet again ended up with 100% of the map explored but only one of the two items we needed to start this challenge. It's safe to say at this point I was at a complete loss. It started to look like only one of these two items could spawn in at any given time and after multiple failed attempts I let it get the better of me. I shelved the idea and put my time and effort into a few other videos forgetting all about this challenge. Something drew me back to this challenge and I don't know exactly what it was. Every time I had to think of an idea for an upcoming video, this one kept creeping back up and on the 18th of February, I decided it was finally time to head back into the challenge. At this point, I had a fresh new white PS3 instead of my super old loud one from before. This meant all my saves were gone, not like they were that useful anyways, but I started a new world and got straight back to village hunting like nothing ever happened. First world, nothing. Second world, nothing. Third world, also nothing. This trend kept happening over and over again, but I was determined to see it through. I knew that if I could just find that one special world that holds both items I needed, I would be unstoppable. No. If that is physically possible. Okay, library, library. There you go, craft table. 
No. Is that? No flipping way. Oh, look at that loot as well. That, that means this platinum is on. That means I can do this platinum. And with that, it was time to start phase two. These are all the trophies that I need to get before I even think about reaching the nether. And due to this amazing setup we have right now, a lot of these trophies can be done relatively easily. I made bread by stealing wheat off the innocent villagers. This should be a trophy. Crafted a furnace by mining cobblestone with the iron pickaxe on the chest. This should be another trophy as well. Killed a random cow just because I felt like it. There we go, cow tipper. And then deconstructed this village's house for my own financial gain, crafting a stone pickaxe. And then crafted the remaining stone tools for the trophy more tools. I also took it upon myself to cheese the delicious fish trophy because one, I was hungry, and two, I really didn't feel like making a fishing rod just yet, or ever. So I tested the waters, literally, and deleted this fish from existence to see if cooking its corpse would still give me the trophy without actually catching the fish. No way, how did that work? Now at this point, you might be thinking, wow, what an easy challenge. And well, thanks for that, because the next advancement I made was death. Fuck. Yeah, I died and I had no clue where the village was because my map was now floating above my last known location along with the rest of my stuff. This really sucked because I just mined 10 iron ore ready to smelt for the acquire hardware trophy and now all of that was gone. This wouldn't be as bad as dying with diamonds though because I was definitely too good at this game for that to happen. <gasps> You're taking the piss. I searched far and wide, not knowing whether I was heading into the right direction or if I was just voluntarily letting my stuff despawn because I was going the wrong way. I took multiple beatings from different enemies. Oh, just kill me, just kill me. Whatever. Can't take this Minecraft life anymore, I'm done. But it was all worth it in the end when the village appeared right in front of me. Over there, which means our stuff's, our stuff's somewhere. It would have been down here, but I think it's gone. Yeah, it would have been here. I remember I died right in these trees. Oh. Oh my God. No way, all of our stuff's here. I don't know how long I was just waffling around for, but that's got to be so clutch, like so close to being despawning, surely. I now had access to the iron that I thought was forever gone, so I smelted it right away to get that lovely trophy. There we go, acquire hardware. To save myself the hassle of trying to find the village every single time I died, I decided to make myself a bed. Let's get three, three wool and let's get a flip out of here. One more, one more, one more, one more. Well, maybe I've already got actually enough. I got five. What the hell? I didn't even have to kill these two guys. Doesn't matter anyway. Oh, wait, I can't place a bed. Oh, I would class a bed as two blocks. I quickly searched around my village to see if any of the villagers had a bed, but it seemed like they were all night owls or slept on the floor. I had no choice but to leave the village in search of a new one. And this started the quest for a bed. Before we do this though, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made with over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships ranging from the biplanes of the 1920s to the fighter jets we see today. With over 70 million players worldwide, you're sure to get into a few epic PvP fights while taking in the incredibly realistic graphics and authentic sound effects that is War Thunder. My favorite feature so far is still the very impressive x-ray view, allowing you to see exactly where a shell penetrated your vehicle and what ultimately led to its destruction. Alongside this, War Thunder also includes a very detailed model of every single vehicle. Whether it's the engine, tanks, weapons or crew, all of these are susceptible to damage and can be fully destroyed to hinder a vehicle's overall performance. This level of realism is what makes War Thunder so unique and the best part is that it's completely free on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. Whether you're a new player or you haven't played in over six months, you can click my link in the description or pinned comment to get a massive bonus pack that includes 100,000 silver lions, multiple premium vehicles, 50% booster pack and a whole lot more. This is only available for a limited time so be quick. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring the video and let's get back to the challenge. Along the way, I stumbled across a desert temple. If you know anything about Minecraft, you know these can hold pretty crazy loot, and I was holding out hope that this one would contain a diamond. I approached the temple, mined my way up, and mined the center block, which revealed a creeper. A single creeper that very generously walked over the pressure plate, blowing up every single chest and leaving me with nothing. I walked away from this situation feeling rather sad, and that sadness only continued once I realized that the map was complete and it was not another village within this world. The dream of ever getting a bed was well and truly destroyed. I decided that since I had nothing else to cure my sadness, I would breed a few chickens just for a joke. But after luring them back to this makeshift pen and trying to breed them, I was told that these 
animals cannot enter love mode. It felt like the entire world was against me at this point and I just got off for the night, leaving my chickens trapped in their cage. I returned a few days later, and I mean real days, to find out that my chickens had laid a few eggs while I was setting up OBS and my mic. This unexpected situation prompted a little spark in my empty brain as I now realized baking a cake was a possibility. I already had sugar canes from my bed hunting journey and I now had two eggs at my disposal. The only thing I needed was milk. I crafted sugar from the sugar canes and made three buckets with the minimal iron I had in my inventory. Said goodbye to my bed because, you know, truthfully, I'd rather be attacked by phantoms every night than sleep peacefully and set my spawn. And then milk the cow for its nutritional fluid. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> All of this to finally craft the cake and tick one more trophy off the list. There we go. The lie. The cake is a lie. In case you missed it, I also crafted a bow because today would be the day I start attempting the trophy Sniper Jewel. This might be one of the worst trophies in this challenge and it's got nothing to do with placing blocks at all. If a mob of any kind is over 40 to 45 blocks away, they just despawn. Simple as that. And with the trophy requiring me to hit a skelly from over 50 blocks away, you can see how this one was practically impossible. I had to at least attempt it though because the platinum was well and truly on its way. So I waited around and eventually found my unsuspecting enemy. They were just chilling, minding their own business, and received an arrow to the skull. I'm so bad at aiming. Oh, that has to have been it. Come on, give me that trophy, come on. Long story short, the trophy didn't pop at all, but I would be back to attempt this with a better technique down the line. To save myself from being down in the dumps, I decided it was time to go mining. This was something I was holding off for as long as possible because if I die anywhere in a cave, that's pretty much no chance of me getting my stuff back. Feeling confident, I started the mine with an iron pickaxe and a dream. Oh my. Yeah, so I panicked and here we are back at spawn without a single idea as to where I meant to go. As you can tell, it seemed the hardest part of this challenge wasn't even the challenge itself, but rather I had no bed within the world. I managed to make it back home and felt it was best to place the majority of my inventory within the weaponsmith chest, leaving a lot of room for new ores and also safety proofing all my stuff so that if I succumb a gruesome death, a lot of my stuff is chilling in the chest. After crafting multiple pickaxes with the various bits of iron I had found on my travels, I headed down to explore the cave that took my life moments ago. The cave was actually pretty big and it was insane to see such a life underground right below the best village ever made. I made sure to grab iron along the way, but truthfully, all I cared about was finding diamonds. I was pretty much purely focused on the back. And so I searched every single corner, every single lava pool, every single water stream, killed every single mob and left no stone unturned. But no matter how hard I tried, there was no diamonds to find. The cave stretched way beyond anything I could have imagined, but I just couldn't find any. I decided to cut my losses and head back home. And that was when this happened. Um. Oh, let's go. We gotta get over there about dying, but that's great, great news. That's a, that's a trophy right there. I couldn't believe that me, Satire, the worst Minecraft player of all time, had finally found his first diamond. It was truly an amazing feeling to know that we were finally on the right path. After breaking my way through the wall around the lava, I got ready to see just how many diamonds I had stumbled across. Would it be three, four, maybe even six? And well, it was only one. One singular diamond in this entire cave system. Look at that bad boy right there. First diamond of the playthrough. There we go. Diamonds. Lovely, lovely stuff. One of many, hopefully. All of this excitement made me want to keep searching for more diamonds. If I could get two more, I could craft a diamond pickaxe and get the show on the road. <gasps> You're taking the piss. It's really hard for me to put into words just how down I was about this entire situation. Probably the best thing to happen in the entire video so far, stripped from me within a single second. All of my loot, the 50 odd iron and the multiple other ores were gone forever. So here I was, walking back in a random direction, having no clue if I would even make it back, while the rain poured down from the skies and my mood was at an all time low. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. You know, here we are back to basically, we're basically square one right now. Like, we actually are. I've lost all my food, I've lost, lost all my fucking iron. 
Eventually, the village was within sight and it was pretty obvious to see that my entire in-game wealth had decreased by quite a bit. Seven iron, oh my god. Oh, we've got more iron in here. No, I'm getting off, man. I'm not doing all that again. Fucking hell. I took a few days away from Minecraft because, you know, time heals wounds and all that. And when I came back, I was ready to get the ball rolling once again. I crafted a bunch of pickaxes because realistically, that is the key to get out of any sticky situation during this challenge. And then headed down the fabled mine that had already claimed my life twice. This time, I headed in the opposite direction and into the unknown. The cave once again was generously loaded with iron and coal, but you know exactly what we were here for. And the cave system, by the way, is massive. What was previously explored had been minimal to its actual size, and this led me to countless dead ends, iron veins, and lava pools with no riches to claim. But I wasn't about to let this fact defeat me. I was determined to reclaim what was once lost. Yeah, if we can just make it out with a bit, bit of iron, bit of whatever, then like at least we're back to where we were before we died, kind of thing. Oh! We can't get it. We can't place the blocks to get it, but rip. But what I could do is mine up to the surface, grab a few buckets and come back down with water to turn the lava into obsidian. Once I got to the surface though, this plan really didn't matter because I emerged in the ocean right next to the village. This was convenient for a few reasons because now not only do we have another access to the cave, but the ocean should do the job for me and turn the lava into obsidian, allowing me to do absolutely nothing and still get all the diamonds. I quickly smelted my iron and crafted a few buckets just in case the ocean ran out of water. But while it's all fun and games making a few jokes, the ocean didn't cover the entire cave, so the buckets were useful after all. What do I place the water then? Maybe on the roof? Nice, okay, that'll do. Seven diamonds. Don't worry, I did do a quick speed run of the surrounding area, but ultimately, seven diamonds seemed to be the max, and I was completely okay with that. I mean, I wanted more, but I was happy with the progress that was made. I realized that now was probably the best time to start the Enchanter Trophy because, well, we were rich now. With the seven diamonds to my name, I crafted the first and only diamond pickaxe of this entire playthrough because after breaking the obsidian for the enchantment table, there really wasn't anything else to do with the pickaxe. Yes, it could help me mine faster and look Looking back on it now, that was actually a very valid point. But at the time, my mindset was just to use the massive amount of iron I collected from the cave and save anything diamond related for the end. Along with the obsidian, I also needed a single book, which requires one leather and three pieces of paper. And to get paper, we need sugarcane. If you remember from before, I had collected a good chunk of sugarcane for the cake trophy, so this shouldn't be a problem. All I had to do was grab it from the chest and ah. I chucked them in the lava. So I headed out in search of more sugarcane, which proved to be a pretty eventful trip since a lot of it spawned relatively close to the base. I also tried the sniper jewel trophy again too, but as you can probably guess, I had no luck. This trophy was slowly becoming the bane of my existence. I returned home, making a few pieces of paper and then crafted the book with some leftover leather I had lying around. And after grabbing the obsidian and diamonds, ticked one more trophy off the list. Okay, here we go. Enchantment table without placing a single block. Hopefully the trophy pops. There we go, enchanter. With another trophy down, I decided it was now or never to get this stupid sniper jewel trophy. This thing had haunted me since the very beginning and I wasn't standing for it any longer. Every single night, I would head out in search of that one ideal line of sight that to me looked like 50 blocks in distance. It took a while, but it was on this random rainy night that my prayers were finally answered. I positioned myself as far back as I could, lined up my crosshairs and took the shot. That's gotta be it, that's gotta be it, that's gotta be it. There's no way, cause like the render distance doesn't go that far. I can't do anything else apart from that. How is that not the trophy? Like, are you actually joking? Like what else, what else can I do? I don't know how else I would go about doing this trophy. So there I was in the rain once again, down in the dumps with nothing to show for my hard work. It felt like everything was against me at this point and to rub salt in the wound, the multiple forums online mentioning this trophy just state that you can place a name tag on the skeleton, which I didn't have. Another common fix is to build around the skeleton to make sure it didn't wander off when you walk further than 45 blocks away. And well, I wasn't about to do that. So I came up with a plan. I would dig underneath the skeleton, trapping it in the ground while I find a tree to shoot from that was hopefully over 50 blocks away. With such a solid plan, what could really go wrong? 
What the fuck? Man, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, clearly I needed a new approach. I spoke with Epic Piss, and after throwing ideas back and forth, he finally gave me a good idea. Such an amazing idea that it makes me look stupid for not thinking about it right at the start. I would still be risking my life trying to get the skeleton into the ground, but the absolute game changer to this new strap is to mine a 50 block path in one direction, all while keeping the skeleton trapped in the ground. This eliminated the need for a 50 block high tree, which thinking about it now sounds extremely unrealistic. No fucking way, man. He just despawned again. Like, what? How am I meant to, to do this? A new one spawned relatively close by, but after multiple attempts, it just wouldn't fall into the trap. Daytime was fast approaching, and the thought of doing this all again did not sound pleasing in the slightest. Come on. Just drop, just drop. Come on, man. No. Go, 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 go. Yes. Yes. If it's going to be any time, it's going to be now. I'm going to put him in water. Uh, maybe that m might make him not despawn. I don't know. Okay, now or never. Did he, is he dead? Oh, don't tell me he just despawned, man. Oh! Let's f go. Finally. With arguably the hardest trophy so far now out of the way, it was time to clean up the last few overworld trophies before starting the nether journey. The one that felt like a personal achievement more than anything else was dispense this, the crafting a dispenser. I made sure to purposely leave this until the sniper jewel trophy was knocked out, but little did I know how hard that was going to be. Using the same bow I had just used to dome that skeleton from 50 blocks away really did feel quite uplifting though. Here, this should be a trophy. I'm glad we're at this stage. Bam. Lovely. Dispense with this. And the last one I chose to leave until after Sniper Jewel was Leader of the Pack. This is for befriending five dogs, and I mean, with the amount of skeletons I had just killed, it was pretty much a guaranteed trophy. Oh, first try. Let's go. Oh my god, yeah, this, this trophy's coming along smoothly. So either we need... Oh, we've already got it. Leader of the Pack. That was flipping easy. And with that, every single overworld trophy had just been earned without placing a single block, which means all of these trophies are now within our grasp. But first, we actually needed to build the nether portal. So I made a flint and steel, grabbed some obsidian, and placed a few. Nah, I'm just joking, but I did make a flint and steel. PS3 does not like anything. Oh, I'm gonna leave. Oh shit. Oh shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my god. Some of you might not know this, but there is a very solid method to make a nether portal without ever placing a block. And all I needed was a single bucket of water and a lava source. The only lava source close by from what I could remember was back down the ocean entrance. And this became the perfect playground in testing the best method for this strat. I say perfect playground because I quickly ran into either a glitch or an intentional feature that makes absolutely zero sense. Essentially, to build the nether portal without actually building a nether portal, you need to place lava in the spot you want the obsidian to be and then place water directly next to it. Very, very simple stuff. But where this quickly spiraled out of control was due to the water basically duplicating itself after being placed. This led to failed portal after failed portal and eventually the entire cave was flooded because I pretty much had unlimited water sources everywhere. Bro, what is with these fucking unlimited water pools? What the hell? What the fuck? Why can't it? Why is it just making unlimited sources of water? I couldn't find anything online about this, but if one of you are hardcore Minecraft fans, please let me know why this happened. With an extremely ideal spot for the portal now compromised, the hunt for another lava pool began. It seemed easier to just search above ground instead because I wanted to have easy access whenever needed. I searched far and wide, strolling into caves and going through different biomes just to find an open lava source somewhere near the village. Oh. A few lessons had been learned with the previous failed attempts, but mainly the portal building had to be away from the pool of lava itself, allowing me to try again if needed instead of reigniting another search because the water spread too far. I decided to build it into the hill, breaking a mold for the portal frame to sit in, but as expected, the cursed water buckets came back to haunt me once again. Oh, brother. Why does it do that, man? I thought about jumping into the lava myself at this point, but I'm glad I didn't because five seconds later, I made a game-changing discovery. 
Oh, so I can put, I can put water like this, and then I can. Ah. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably how you're meant to do it, but I was just trying to do this as blind as possible, going purely off what I knew was doable, rather than sitting there and watching the tutorial. Regardless, this was major news for the entire process. Not only could I stop the unlimited water source, but I could now just flood the entire place, placing lava exactly where I wanted the block to go, streamlining this process to completion. I will admit, uh, I did get the dimensions wrong. Uh, oh, I've, I've actually built it wrong. <laughs> but it was nothing that a quick water lava fusion couldn't fix. Will this give me the trophy or will this challenge be actually just completely over? There's only one way to find out. I pray that gives me the trophy. I actually pray. Please, 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 please. Yes. Let's fucking go. That was like the, the one I was most kind of scared on. I didn't know, you know, if it tracked you placing the blocks to, because it says you have to build an elephant. So I was like, okay, like maybe, maybe I can't get it but that's flipping go. I've seen a few clips online regarding bad nether spawns and truthfully, I did not want to lose my progress once again by falling into lava. So I headed back to base, dropping off all my loot and begging for a good nether spawn. I knew that if the spawn was bad, the video was probably over. I can't bridge to anything using blocks and I can't even place water in the nether either. This was genuinely make or break for the future of this video and I was sat there expecting the worst. Hopefully, please, please, please do not spawn us in some random location. Please, 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 please. Somewhere good. Somewhere, at least on land, somewhere. Oh, I'm actually sort of scared, man, because this could be like make or break. Oh, okay. Thank fuck. Uh, <gasps> there's no way. There is no fucking way. How, how lucky is that? How actually lucky is that? Like a one in a million chance of that happening. Like exactly what we need. Like we needed a fortress. And it's just right here. What the fuck? That's insane. Like, that's actually insane. I don't know. I'm actually lost for words. That's actually like fucking insane. With such an amazing spawn handed to me on a plate, it was time to get me a trophy that I thought would take me hours. There we go. Like what is the, what is the chances, man? Oh my God. I farmed a few more blazes on this trip because realistically, why not? And then headed back to base to turn them into blaze powder. I did this trip a few times because the portal had such a goated spawn. But on one of my trips, I did encounter a ghast. If a ghast decided to blow up the portal, I'd have no way of getting home unless I wanted to jump into the lava and lose all my stuff once again. And this disastrous situation was all I could think of when attempting the return to send a trophy. To get this, I need to hit the gas fireball straight back at him. And I don't know if I'm just bad at this game, which is probably the case, but I failed over and over and over again, almost dying on countless occasions because my hits weren't registering with the fireball. What? On the odd chance I did hit the fireball, the gas would already be in a different location and it became a failed attempt. It wasn't long before the gas flew away because I can only assume it got bored of trying to kill me. Surely, surely you can see me. Surely. Oh, oh that's got to be it. That's got to be, that's a trophy, surely. Lovely stuff. Return to sender. As you can see, there's still one more trophy to get and I can now reveal that trophy is local brewery. To build a brewing stand, you need a blaze rod and cobblestone, which is items I already had. But for some reason, I wanted to see just how far I could go without placing any physical objects. And so I made the decision to get this brewing stand by other means. This would require a village that had one lying around, which unfortunately mine didn't, or an end city that had an end ship chilling at the top. I don't think little old Satire at this moment in time really knew what he was signing up for, but I wanted to see just how far I could truly push this challenge. And so I started preparing for the end. I knew that if I not only had to beat the Ender Dragon, but now also conquer an entire end city, a full suit of diamond armor was heavily needed. I mined down to Y11 because that is of course diamond level and started the tedious yet calming process of strip mining. Let's go. Oh, let's flip and go, man. Yo. Oh, let's flip and go. Oh, 
14 whole diamonds have been found on my first strip mine adventure. And truly, nothing could top this. The feeling of being almost at a full diamond set already from one strip mine was incredible. And I was ready to head home before this happened. Oh, let's flip and go. Oh, nice little stack. One, two, three, four, five, 19. Oh, no fucking way. Bro, I was literally just, what? What is this, man? Holy shit. Please, I beg you have a saddle, please. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's actually, like, actually, that's such a big win. Like, that's even bigger than all these diamonds that we found. Like, that's actually crazy. Finding a saddle was a big, big win because this gave access to one of the two trophies I was completely unsure how to get. I mean, I wasn't even sure if every PS3 world included a mob spawner due to the world sizes on the console. I was truly lost for words and I knew that with 19 diamonds and a saddle now in my possession, I had to head home even if I wanted to continue mining. After chucking a lot of random bits into lava, I crafted a carrot on a stick and headed out to find a test subject. Okay, let's go. Fall off the cliff, please. Okay, that was very anticlimactic. To make this a bit easier, I decided to dig a hole, not super deep, but one that would serve its purpose. Go on. That should have been the trophy. That was that was damage. I think that's that's enough. Or maybe I have to kill the pig. He took damage. That's what the trophy description says. It turns out that the pig has to drop five blocks or more before taking damage. Essentially, almost killing the little guy just for a trophy. Okay, this is actually going to kill the pig, so it's best to be the trophy, if I can get it. Okay. Okay. Okay, what the flip? That's got to be the trophy. He's literally almost dead. There we go, when pigs fly. Lovely stuff. Can I get my saddle back? Let's head back to base, and I'm getting off for the night, I think. It's been a pretty successful day. With the stress of losing the saddle off my shoulders, it was time to head back to the mine. I crafted a load of pickaxes and put a shift in, heading in the same direction as before. Turns out there was absolutely nothing down this way and I got hit with that lovely unlimited water source once again. Oh, why does it... What is that glitch? <laughs> so I cut my losses and headed back home. Shout out Frosty Liam. The thing is like, you know, Ideal play for I'd have like 17 billion chests and like we try and organize shit as well as possible, but I don't have that luxury. This is my first time playing Minecraft in a good while. To have a chance to kind of like plat this game and not be able to like use one of the main like mechanics in the game. It limits a lot of creativity. Like, you know, the whole point of Minecraft is to build and do all this shit and I can't even build a house, bro. And then I had an actual genius idea of making a crop farm. For some reason, I had in my head that if I can't place any blocks, then what was really the point in doing anything? But what I very clearly forgot was that the other core part of this game was still available, mining. And so the idea was to mine out this entire section so that I could hold the ground and create a farm. farm ended up turning out great and it later became my main source of food since you pretty much get unlimited carrots after having a farm big enough. With food sorted forever, it was time to dip back into the strip mine and hopefully grab the last few diamonds I needed for a full set. Oh, let's go. Full diamonds. so far with an additional eight diamonds in our possession the full set of armor could now be easily made well as long as i made it back home stupidly i decided to keep exploring because i was so addicted to the diamond hunt i found a few pieces of iron but it seemed my diamond luck had finally ran out i say diamond luck because what happened next was a different kind of luck entirely i'm just i'm scared i'm gonna get lost man I'm trying my best to not get lost, but, uh, you know. Oh, shit. Are you joking? Hello? What? There's no way this is the f***ing... 
the end portal thing. There's no fucking way, bro. Finding the stronghold was easily the biggest win of this video. Having a direct strip mine to the end was genuinely a blessing. Not only did I now know exactly where it was, but I no longer needed extra ender pearls to actually find the damn thing. The biggest question on my mind, however, was whether the end portal was even here. I have heard countless stories on the end portal being cut off due to the randomness of the world, and this made me wary going into the stronghold. After exploring the first section, it became pretty clear that there was no end portal within this first area, and the excitement I once had was slowly starting to turn into fear. Fear fueled by the fact I might have to restart this entire world because of something that was out of my control. I quickly discovered that the stronghold had been split into two, leaving another opportunity for the end portal to be found, but it was no use. A few books that were actually pretty decent but unable to be used, four ender pearls, and multiple rooms leading to nothing. The search for the end portal was well and truly over. As I was about to head home, I saw a set of stairs in the distance and decided to check them out. Okay, all out for nothing. Uh, is it there? I can't, I can't tell for sure, but at least we know there's one more spot that we haven't checked if, if it isn't here, I guess. With the whole other part of the stronghold undiscovered, the flame inside me reignited. Could this be nothing or could this be exactly what we were looking for? I knew I couldn't just bridge over there, so I did the next best thing and mined a staircase up to where I presumed it was going to be. Why did it spawn on these flipping gut? Oh my God. Bro! Oh my god. Oh my fucking god, what the hell? Oh, I'm fucking like shaking because I just, I feel like I'm exploring nothing. <laughs> Please, man. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, let's fucking go. Okay, so we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need nine ender pearls. I can't put into words just how good it felt to know that everything was okay. To know that I didn't have to start another world and go through this entire thing again was truly a great feeling, which is why it sucks to let you all know that the next five hours of my Minecraft life would be absolute hell. Before getting into that though, I took great pride in creating my first and only set of diamond armor because realistically, I would only be using it for the end fight and I also couldn't bring myself to strip mine any more than I already had. The part where this challenge takes a turn though is when trying to find the remaining ender pearls for the portal. Truthfully, I have never beaten Minecraft before. I know, big shock. And because of that, it was, if you could believe it, my first real attempt at doing anything with the end. I think I was probably just scared of the ender dragon or something, so I stayed away whenever I played all those years ago. I searched night after night with no success and the single time I found an enderman, I used the pearl because my controller was broken. Okay, there we go, cool. Okay, bro. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. Oh, let's go. Four ender pearls, but I nearly died. That was pretty bad. After assessing the situation and realizing I'm probably fighting a losing battle, I went on the hunt for a horse as this would allow me to search an area faster, giving me more time to find the Enderman. Oh, see, I'm coming for you. No, not, not, not like that, bro. Oh, a little baby horse. Cute our horse for real, on you? Saddle up. Look at this, bro. Ah. There was just something about this little guy that made me want to take him home, so I did. We traveled through the forest, over trees, through most of the day, and eventually reached the river, separating us from the village. But little did I know, there was someone waiting for us in the water. Bro! I was adamant to get back. I didn't care about my stuff at all, but the horse, I wanted to take that little guy home and give it the best life I could. After spending most of the night trying to find my way back home, it's safe to say we were one horse down. As sad as it was to see the baby horse go, at least we still had, uh, what's his name? All right, let's grab James. With James, we spent the day running across trees and killing a few cows. Also, in the end, I could protect him as well as possible. Oh, bro, is Booted and suited, or was it suited and booted? I was confident that James was as safe as possible, and so I headed out to hunt some Enderman. And after spending all night trying to find one, we finally killed an Enderman. Oh wait, I mean, we got killed by an Enderman. Oh! After making it back to my loop, it's safe to say that my spirits were at an all-time low. Me and James waited for nighttime once again, and things weren't going too great. There was still no signs of any Enderman whatsoever, and then things really took a turn for the worst. Oh my 
day is mine. Josh taking a piss. <sighs> actually, I just don't know. I actually just give up, to be honest. Like, really close to just like saying fuck this challenge, man. I cannot explain to you how much I wanted to quit right here. Countless nights have been lost searching for Enderman, and now James was gone. I was truly left on my own. The rest of this 10 minute clip is me walking back in silence. And if that doesn't express how I was truly feeling, then I also decided to get off for the night and go straight to sleep. The Enderman hunt had truly destroyed me. A few days had passed and within those days, I did a bit of research on various forums to see exactly what was the issue with these spawn rates. It seems that no one really knows why, but the best solution is to circle the desert biome as it has no trees or really anything to obstruct your view. So when I came back, the first thing I did was make a clock just so I could see exactly when it was time to head out and hunt some endermen. And then I did exactly that. The first five or so minutes was pretty bland and it seemed like the desert strat was a massive waste of time. But as the sun rose, it seemed luck had decided to show its face once again. Drop it please, drop on. Yes, man. five, we got five. The next few nights went just as good too. Nice, seven ender pearls, man. We are flipping cooking. Nice. Eight, we're on eight now, we're on eight. That's great. Get it? <laughs> Nine already. Where's this guy going? We have enough now for, for the end, which is flipping amazing. I want to get like a few more because I've done it. I've looked at a few videos and it is possible for the end portal to be away from the, from the island. And obviously, if that's the case, I can't build over. So. so that's what I did. And after grabbing the last two as a safety precaution, headed back to the village to turn nine ender pearls into eyes of ender. It's insane to say this, but we had finally done it. The only thing standing between us and the end of the game was just how far the end spawn was from the main island. Oh shit. Okay, we're entering the end with absolutely nothing. Just to see if, when we get there, it's not like a death trap, do you know what I mean? I don't wanna like go in there and lose all my stuff. Okay. Oh, let's go. Okay. This is not the best, but uh, I think that is definitely ender pearlable. Ender pearlable. There you go, the end. Might even be able to make that jump to be fair. We'll try it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh my god, this is sketchy, bro. I've never been to the uh, to the end before, like it, like legit. I can, I can. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, rookie mistake on my part, but it didn't matter anyways, because we had all of our end gear in the village waiting to be used. However, my PS3 had other ideas. Hello. Uh, okay, so my game just crashed. What does that mean for my world? Okay, so we're back. We're back before we placed the Eye of Enders in the thing. I honestly couldn't tell you why my PS3 just decided to reboot itself. I took this as an opportunity to just go for the end fight right now and grabbed all my diamond gear ready to go. Let's get the diamond armor on. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Jeez. Okay, okay. <laughs> that shit is so dramatic, man, like every single time. I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of nervous. Okay, let's go, let's go. Now that we were finally here and in one piece, I got to work. Each of these pillars hold an end crystal right at the top. And to defeat the ender dragon, these have to be removed first since they are consistently healing the dragon. Now, I'm gonna be real, I was super nervous. I watched a few videos to prepare myself for the fight, but actually being here was another story. With multiple ways to approach this situation, I decided to try my luck at these caged end crystals first and carefully remove the cage from around the crystals. I'm sure there's a much better method out there, but I I was under pressure and honestly trying my best. Once removing the bars, I jumped down into the water and shoot the crystal from afar. Well, that was the plan. Oh, <gasps> oh my god, that was fucking clutch. Holy shit. You can't make that up, what the hell? This victory was very short-lived because I ended up looking at a few endermen on accident. But if you thought I was going to die here, I'm happy to say you were wrong. I destroyed end crystal after end crystal for the only thing left was the main man himself, the ender dragon. Yes. That's, that's it then, isn't it? Yo, this fight is sick. 
just uh Oh, I've run out of I've run out of arrows. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. He's coming in, he's coming in, he's coming in. Oh, we have got this in the bag, bro. We've got this in the bag. Yo, this shit's kind of easy, man. Like, why was I why was I stressing so hard, man? What the hell? Get out of here, bro. Get out of here. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Let's fucking go. I will eat my victory bread. Damn. What a freaking adventure, bro. There we go. The credits are rolling. The end. Woo! Damn, what a flipping experience, man. I have a... Uh, that's the first time, li literally the first time I've ever beat Minecraft. Like, legit. Gonna head back to the base. Gonna get some water buckets. And then we're gonna go to the end city. Yeah, you heard that right. It was time to head into the end city. I restocked my water and headed back over to the end to grind a few ender pearls. Why, you might ask? Well, I had a plan. If you remember a little while ago, I mentioned that there was another way to grab a brewing stand by reaching the end ship. Now, these end ships are not easy to access. You first have to ender pearl through this small one block gap, which gives access to the end city itself. But risking your life for a one block perfect ender pearl is the easy part. Then you have to fight your way through dozens of shulkers, making sure to eat as much as possible so you don't die, all with the goal of hopefully reaching the top in one piece to get a chance at reaching the end ship. But what if I told you I had a separate plan, one that would completely avoid all the shulkers, one that would hopefully get us to the end ship without ever being in any real danger. And this was when Operation Ender Pearl comes into play. I knew that if I wanted to reach the end ship, regardless of my approach, it would need to be an ender pearl because the gap is just too far. But then that got me thinking, what if I farm enough ender pearls, make it through the end city portal, and then just pearl up to the top? Surely that would avoid all the shulkers that are designed to be a massive nuisance. Well, there's only one real way to find out. So I got farming. I killed Enderman after Enderman, slowly getting redemption for the time wasted trying to find these losers in the overworld before I finally reached 10 Ender Pearls, which I believed would be enough to execute this little plan of mine. Higher up. Oh, that was so close. Oh, wait, I made it. Yo, let's go. So my idea is that to skip the hassle of the shulker boxes and all that trash, we just end the pearl up, get to around here, and then end the pearl over. Let's start, uh, let's go up there. Okay, go, 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 okay. Pray this works. Oh, we made it, we made it, we made it. Holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> but I didn't, I, I did not think the plan was gonna work. I just don't think we're gonna make it over there, that's the thing. This is make or break. I don't know if the end of the is even going to like reach that far, but it's the only plan I've got. And we have to see if it's, I don't know where to even aim to, to be honest. Maybe like right there. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't think this was going to work at all. The fact this plan actually worked was insane, but it seemed that in my intense hype to get all of this right, I missed one crucial detail. There should be a brewing stand in here. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot all the ingredients, I forgot everything. Oh, bollocks. Like, I forgot to bring the stuff to make the potion. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to go back. Such a simple and honest mistake had not only costed me a few ender pearls, but now meant I was risking my life to not only get home, but then also get back here with the brewing ingredients. However, there really wasn't another way. So I grabbed the elytra and chest loot from the ship and headed back through the portal to grab the loot that I needed. It might not seem like it, but this situation really had me stressing. There was just so much that could go wrong. I managed to make it to the end city once, so what's to say I don't overshoot the ender pearl and lose all of my stuff? Stuff. What's to say I don't accidentally fall off the end ship and die? I felt like I was messing with something that I would only get one attempt with. And so, once I grabbed some blaze powder, sugar, and a few bottles of water, I re-entered the end with a massive amount of stress on my shoulders. Come on, we got this, we got this, we got this, ready? Uh, go. Yes! Get into the end city again, removed 99% of the stress I once had because now it was practically impossible to die. Or was it? Nah, I'm joking. I don't die here, but we do make it back to the end ship with the best method known to man. We're here. Okay, so take these bad boys off. Water bottle in there. Uh, blaze powder in here. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I didn't even make any... I didn't even do anything but you know actually 
thinking about that, if PS3 trophies are delayed, do you think I was given the trophy by just picking up the ones that are already done? So I basically, I basically just did all of that extra shit. Risked going through the portal again, risked doing all the shit. When I could have just picked up the potions right at the beginning, that would have been fine. Oh my god. I went on to absolutely obliterate the end city after this, stealing all the loot from the innocent shulkers and making it back through the one block portal in one piece. It's been a crazy fucking journey, man. I've loved, I've actually loved just going through Minecraft. It made me feel like a, a kid again. Like, honestly, the fact that I can do this shit and like have, like, I'm just having fun. And like you guys want to watch and shit, it's just crazy. So I appreciate every single one of you because I know it's just so cool to just go back and play like a, ga a game like this that I used to play like every single day of my childhood, like playing with my friends and stuff like that to just now where like I can sit here and play it and you guys are going to watch and comment and like hopefully enjoy it. It's just, it's cool. It's very cool. We are back home now. All this crazy ass loot. It's just a great way to end off. I don't know. We got one trophy left, but I just, I can't figure out how to get this trophy done. I don't think there's a world where this trophy is possible without me placing a block. I mean, honestly, I was right. The last trophy on a rail is one that I cannot do without placing a rail. There are a few workarounds in my head with the main one being that maybe I could just find a mine in my world that had a long enough rail. But let's be real, that was never gonna happen. And so I settled on the next best thing. How am I looking? What the freak? The man himself, Mr. Epic Piss, volunteered to help me out. The only idea I could come up for this trophy is that the 500 meters of straight rails is placed by someone other than me, allowing me to ride to the end and grab the trophy, still without technically placing a single thing. So we began work. I would mine out any cobblestone needed or mine up the unused tracks from the tutorial world and hand it all to him so that he could place it down for me. This seemed like a pretty solid plan, but Epic Piss had other ideas. Thank you. Isn't PS5 like, oh, I just got fucking up here, bro. <laughs> buddy's crying. I, I ain't having a word with you no more. Better get your dog safe, buddy. After an hour or two of just messing around, finding the right resources, and watching Epic Piss build the entire track while I cheered him on, it seemed that it was finally ready to be tested. I'm a truth, mate. We are going through right now. Built by Epic Piss. See if this bad boy pops right now. Home run, mate. Home run. But I only know when I get out. Give it a little bit, just in case. Maybe it takes some time. There we go. On a rail. We did it. We did it. Let's freaking go. Awarded all trophies. This challenge was super fun to do and I'd 100% be down to do this again with a different game, providing you all want to see that of course. Again, thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to download War Thunder for free today. Whether you're a new player or you haven't played in over 6 months, be sure to click my link in the description to receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including 100,000 silver lions, multiple premium vehicles and a whole lot more. Thank you all as always for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed this one and I'll be back again soon with another one. Am I? And this place, the dirt block. Oh. <laughs> ah, you don't messed up now, bro. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> don't even get in front of me. That's funny. That thinks he's dream.